the, there was a wonderful neuroscientist who died a few years ago, a very mourned untimely death. His name was Dr. Yak Panksepp. And he distinguished a number of um, brain systems, emotional systems that we share with other mammals, actually. They're more developed than human beings, but we share them with other mammals. They include care, and, and he capitalized these, C-A-R-E, and that's our um, biologically, genetically, evolutionally determined impulse to care for the vulnerable. Its primary purpose is, of course, the care of the young, because none, was, none more vulnerable than a newborn and, and a child. So there's got to be some system in the brain, in the brain of the adult that, that compels or calls the, the parent caregiver to take care of the child. And that's called the care system. And it has certain neurochemicals associated with it, oxytocin and uh, vasopressin and endorphins and, and so on. <clears throat> so care is one system. We have a system for rage. You can see how that's necessary because when somebody is encroaching on your boundaries, you want to be able to defend yourself. So no, stay out. That's the rage system. And we have systems for lust, obviously. A system for seeking. Now, one of the systems that he distinguished was what he calls panic grief, panic slash grief, again, capitalized. This is the response of the young creature who doesn't get the care that they need. If you're an infant and your parents are not there, to, not there with you, they're meant to be with you 24-7, by the way. No mother cat leaves their infant. No mother orangutan puts the infant in a tree and goes off on a picnic. So when the parent is not around, the, the infant is meant to panic. Why? Because the infant panic response will uh, show itself in crying and distress, and that'll bring the parent running because the parent's care system gets activated by the child's panic. Grief is when the care is lost and there's real grief. And that's the necessary process to come to terms with the loss. It's gone, I'm not getting it back. I'm so sad. Now, in our evolutionary environment, where we grew up in small band hunter-gatherer groups, the parents may have been lost, but there were others around to hold the child. So the child would be held in their grief. If the child is held in their grief, they can move through it and move past it and know that it's okay to grieve, even liberating to grieve, just like the liberation that you felt. But if the child, if there's nobody around to hold the child in their grief, then we suppress our capacity to grieve. And when you talk about the people that don't know how to grieve, that's what you're talking about. They're telling you about their childhood histories, their infant histories, actually, probably. So these losses, they don't need to be overtly catastrophic, but <clears throat> I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but I was reading my mother's diary um, that she kept when I was a newborn. And, uh, you know, this is during wartime in Budapest under the Nazis, mostly. Um, and I always thought that my trauma had to do with those big T events. But then she talks about I'm three weeks old and she's lying there with me and it's two, It's almost two in the morning, quarter to two in the morning. And my poor little Gabby, that's the diminutive for Gabor, 
I feel so bad for you. My heart is breaking, she writes in her diary. Because you've been crying for the last hour and a half, hour and a quarter, asking to be fed. But I promised the doctor that I would feed you on schedule. So you're not due to feed until 2 o'clock again. Because I fed you at 10 o'clock. Okay, this time I'm going to give in. But don't think it's going to happen again. Because you're old enough of a young gentleman to realize that sometimes we have to wait for things. Okay, now, I was grieving for an hour and a half, panicking and grieving. And these little, little losses that we think is just normal part of life, if they subvert or disappoint the child's natural expectation, they result in panic, they result in grief. And if they keep happening, it's unbearable. So we suppress the grief, which doesn't mean that it goes away. But it means that we put it as sort of a, a, a body armor against it. We tense up against it. So in that article, when I talk about when there's tension, pay attention to it, I never Tell anybody how to grieve. I mean, yeah, there's grieving rituals. And if you're in a culture or can join one, like the Irish, they keen, don't they? They're women who are just keen for the dead. And there's a Jewish Shiva. Um, uh, you sit Shiva, you, you, you visit the family of the, of, of the, of the deceased one, and, and you spend time together. You know, there's, in other words, culturally, uh, the indigenous healing practices. So if you're in a culture that offers grieving practices, well, that's great. But for the most part, this culture does not. So when somebody asks you, how do I grieve? Um, there's, I, there's nothing I can teach, teach them. It's not going to do this to grieve. But I would do if I was talking to somebody who believes there's some grief to relief, but they don't know how to. I would just start with where they are at the moment. I would say, well, what's happening for you right now? Uh, a kind of compassionate inquiry. And if anybody here, of course, I have no idea. I'm not guaranteeing success, but I'm just telling you how I would go about it. I would begin with what is, not with we're trying to get somewhere and we're not getting there and it's frustrating. And we should be getting there. Uh, but I mean, your you're mindfulness practitioners, um, it's a matter of becoming very ac actively and compassionately uh, curious about just actually what's going on. Not, what's not, not about what's not going on, but what is going on. So it's an inquiry. So for me, it's not a how to grieve, but it's a question of let's inquire. Let's see what's blocking it. We provide you with the certification and the credentials you need to teach mindfulness in professional settings. I invite you to check out our uh, webpage at teach.mindfulnessexercises.com to learn more about the program and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the inside.